Hi, my name is Michael and I'm an overdrive-aholic. And so today we're going to talk about overdrives and how to make sure that you can get the one that you really want. As guitar players, we're all pretty much familiar with the term gas, gear acquisition syndrome, and it can be very deceiving. It's very easy to watch a bunch of demos and really get sucked in and really want to uh, try them all, get them all, and have every different possible flavor and variation that's out there. In the process, that can get very expensive. Um, so hopefully, I'm gonna give you some tips today that will help you zero in on just exactly the right pedals that you need so that you don't wind up wasting your money and just succumbing to every opportunity that you have. Welcome back to Wolf Guitars and Gear. Today I'm going to give you five questions that you should ask yourself when you're getting ready to buy your new overdrive pedal. So let's just jump right in. First question you should ask yourself is what do you want the overdrive to do? You know some pedals are good at giving a good mid bump so that your guitar will cut through a mix. And some people use that more than uh, the, the drive on those particular types of pedals. Uh, some popular ones that would fall into this category would be like the Klon or the Tube Screamer that just have a accented mid frequency that uh, just really helps the guitar poke through. Um, another type of overdrive that you may want to consider is what a lot of people will refer to as a transparent overdrive. That's kind of become a catchphrase in the guitar community. So what does transparent overdrive really even mean? Um, it really means that it doesn't really color your, your pedal so much. So in that regard, it kind of stands in direct contrast to the EQ kind of overdrive that I was talking about before with that mid push. This is more of a flat response. It's more retains the guitar's natural tone and just gives you a uh, gain structure on top of it. So what are some examples of this style of an overdrive? Uh, probably some of the most popular ones would be like a blues breaker or a Timmy style pedal would be some really good ones to consider. Some people would even put the Klon into this category even though I think that's perhaps inaccurate because it does have quite a large mid frequency presence. Um, another style that uh, would be very popular is what a lot of people refer to as an amp in a box. And so a lot of these will have the, the, the character and the flavor of a particular style of amp, whether it be a Marshall or a Vox or a Fender. Uh, there's various different ones out there that are designed to give that type of a feel. And so that's something to think about is, is what are you wanting it to do? What are you wanting to achieve with it? And those are some just different types you want to consider. So let's move on to the next one. Number two, how much gain do you need? You know, some different styles of music require different things and what you're trying to do, how you're trying to fit this in with the rest of your rig is going to be very important. So whether you want just kind of a low gain pedal for a bass sound, whether you want something more of a medium sound that you're going to be using to stack with a lower gain pedal or whether you perhaps want a high gain pedal that maybe you're planning to use a solo boost. So I mean it just really just depends on what you're wanting. Uh, you know that's something to consider though is what what type of gain structure do you need on this? Do you need a high lower medium gain? So number three, uh, how will you be using this pedal? Are you the type of player that uses your volume knob a lot? Uh, you know, another huge key component in this is what genre of music are you playing? Um, you know, even within that, I mean, there's there's a lot of different things to consider. Uh, you know, a Tube Screamer is probably one of the most popular types of overdrives that's out there. But if you're a blues player, you're going to be using that overdrive probably differently than, you know, if you're a metal player, putting that in front of, you know, a Mesa or, you know, a PEV 5150 to try to tighten it up. It's a, it's a different application, and so you kind of need to think about the application of how you'll be using the pedal as well. Um, another consideration is uh, what pickups and what guitars are you using it with. Uh, those are all going to play with the pedal differently, and so you're going to want to consider that as well. Number four, what are you stacking it with? Uh, you know, what amp are you using? Are you using something that's kind of more of a Fender you know, twin style, are you using a tweed style, are you using a Vox, are you using a Marshall, are you using a high gain amp such as a, 
as a Marshall or an Orange or a Mesa or you know something along those lines. Those are all things to consider of what is the rest of your, your rig looking like? What other game pedals are you using to stack this with? Uh, are you using a compressor? Where in the pedal chain are you going to place this pedal? All that is going to be very dependent on everything else that's in your rig because your sound is always going to be the sum of all the parts in there. And so you have to be careful of which parts you're adding in to get the sum that you're looking for at the end. Um, number five is, is an overdrive really the best way to achieve the end result that I want? You know, that's what I started off with number one is what do you want the overdrive to do? And I think that that's really the best question to ask. You have to start with the end result first and kind of work backwards to kind of reverse engineer what you really need. For example, if what you need is a transparent overdrive, is that if that's kind of the direction you're leaning, you know, something else you may want to consider in addition to an overdrive, you might want to look at a boost because a boost might wind up give you exactly what you're looking for. It might give you that that same amp tone that you know and that you like, but then you put on this boost and it kind of pushes it past its, its point of overdrive and puts it into a natural state of overdrive that's gonna be very transparent and exactly like what your amp sounds like. Um, another, another way you might wanna look at that is maybe on the other end of the spectrum, maybe you want something that has a lot more gain than your typical overdrive pedal. You might wanna look at a distortion. If you want something that has a lot more sustain and a lot more harmonic content, uh, you might want to look at a fuzz. There's some other things that might fit the bill for what you need, and depending on how you're using it and what your application is, will help you narrow down your search on what it is that you truly need for your sound. And so now, a bonus point on here that's not covered in the one through five, but is probably more important than almost anything else is just to get out there and try it. Go to your local music store, plug it into something that's very similar to what you have. Try it on a variety of different guitars. Try it on, uh, pair it up with various different pedals that you may already own. Uh, and that's what you want to do. You want to try to demo it before you buy it. You can listen to other online demos and it'll, it'll give you some idea of what it's like, but it's not going to be the same as you putting it there together. You using it in your context of what you would be using it for and with your playing style. So I hope you found some value in this today. If you like what you heard, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so that you get all future episodes as we upload them. I hope you have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time here on Wolf Guitars and Gear.